Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video which is actually a continuation of last week's live draw along session. So if you haven't watched last week's session and you want to get your pupil and your iris and all of that fun stuff in then make sure you follow the link in the description, I'm going to leave part one for you. And also there's also links for the line art uh, materials and the reference photo in the part one's video as well for you guys but if you want to finish off your eye study and add all of the fur then let's get into it so this bit of the eye we're going to focus on next is the fur so we're going to start off by adding in the eyebrows that are coming over so we're going to be using our embossing tool for that sorry about dropping that pencil so we're going to take our embossing tool i'm going to use this tip which is kind of one mil uh, 1.2 mil tip and we're just going to add in the whiskers that we can see in his fur here so just making sure that we use some nice strong kind of hard pressured lines making sure they're nice and one length so no stopping and starting or anything like that It doesn't matter if you don't get them 100% correct, you just want to make sure that they really nicely flow from where you're pointing down. There is one that comes over his eye here, but I haven't included that one, otherwise I would have had to include it before we've done the eye here, so don't worry about that one. So you've just got three main little whiskers going on there. So he has a lot of white fur on the sort of coming onto the bridge of the nose here. So we want to make sure that we erase the graphite around there, otherwise that's going to show through. I'm going to come around and do the underneath, so all of this bit first. We're going to do all of the white or lighter toned fur first. We're going to use a warm grey one. So come in here first of all, and we're just going to lightly shade down in the direction that the fur is going. So on this part of the nose, it's coming sort of up towards the top of the piece here. And it slightly curves as we come to this bit just here. So you want to add a very, a very, very slight curve as we get up to that. So we're just going to limit the pressure that's going through the pencil, kind of using it sort of halfway down, kind of on its side, at like 45 degree angle to the paper. It's just going to enable you to get a really nice shading motion. Now this won't look really really white, it will look obviously like a warm grey but we're going to add in tones of blue and everything through here so that it does end up looking quite light and when we add some of the darker colours around it it's going to really lighten up this patch of fur anyway. So you just want to make sure you've got nice consistent smooth light pressure going through your pencil and come around and do the underneath as well so on the underneath it comes in opposite direction so it's coming sort of down and it does have a little bit more curve on this particular part of the fur there's a little bit more of the sort of inner eye corner that we need to add in as well just following the direction of the fur. You can take your time with this as well and just really make sure that you've mapped that down. Getting that in there. And really coming off towards the side as we come around to the right hand side here. So we have a nice base layer going on. I know you can't see the base layer in comparison to the white of the paper very much but that just shows you just how light I'm pressing with the pencil at this particular stage. So I'm just going to go into the inner eye corner with some Caput Mortem and add in, just bring this a little further down and just to blend it into the light for a little bit. I'm going to go over with some Walnut Brown as well. So just adding in a little bit of Caput Mortem and then going straight in with that Walnut Brown. So using a fairly hard pressure, so I'm holding the pencil a little bit more upright here as you can see 
to really get into that area and get it really nice and dark. Just so that's going to help to blend into that lighter fur. So coming back to the white fur here, I'm going to take the same pencil, which is the warm grey one. I'm going to use a slightly harder pressure and start to add some fur lines coming off around the edge of the eye and start to note where we have some slightly darker areas of the fur and shade and add some fur lines down to indicate those darker areas. So you can sharpen up the pencil so you can get a little bit more of that pigment down but you should be able to just about see on my piece here that this bit's slightly darker. I'm going to come around to the right hand side and darken this as well. And slightly on the bridge of the nose as well, there's some slightly darker areas. And use the warm grey too. And do the same coming into those darker areas increasing the pressure that's going through the tip of the pencil as well around the top of the eye and off to the right here as well and also just coming around the inner eye corner off of the darker area around the eye as well. And just adding in some fur lines through the top. Just adding in a little bit of definition. So then we're going to take some of the light ultramarine. This might seem like a little bit of a crazy colour to add but Blue always enhances um, whiter areas, so it's going to make it look really nice and white. We're also going to be adding in a few sort of uh, walnut brown tones through there and maybe a little bit of yellow as well. We're going to add in this blue first. So we're mainly going to come off around the eye. Adding in quite a bit of blue around there. And the underneath as well. So just using some very small light fur lines. coming off towards the right hand side as well you could even go through if you wanted to add some additional colours you could add in some purple 
as well that would be a really nice companion colour to add through there. I'm going to use the Walnut Brown to just start to bring the outer edge of the eye through the lighter fur and just help to blend all of that in. Add in a few sort of darker strokes that I can see coming through here as well to add in the shadows between some of these fur lines. And especially bringing some fur lines off the top edge so it's not just a straight line so we get some really nice blending going on. Some dark lines, I'm going to bring some of those dark lines through the rest of the fur at the top here as well. And just down here we kind of get a little bit of where the fur changes directions. We just need to kind of add in a few fur lines going in slightly different directions down here. going to bring some of these walnut brown fur lines through this lighter patch of fur here just to help blend them through. It's going to create the illusion that there's lots of texture through there as well. I'm going to use the Beaster to just darken up this patch here so introducing a few sort of more with the natural toned yellows coming through with some walnut brown in those darker areas as well so that little patch is getting a little bit darker each time And then just at the edges, where this white fur is kind of encroaching onto this darker fur, we're just going to start to add in some darker lines around the edges there. I'm also going to use a little bit more light ultramarine through the very lightest section just kind of really glazing this over the top just to give it a little bit of blue switching back to that beaster as well to help to blend all of that through just add a few beaster lines at the edges as well and on the underside of the eye because it starts to get a little bit kind of this bit just here is slightly on like a ginger tone so we need to make sure that we start to add in some ginger tones there and then just switching back to the walnut brown just darkening where possible blending in all of this eye line maybe even coming in with some dark sepia if you need to using some of the Caput Mortem through there as well. Okay, so there's a majority of the lighter toned fur in initially, so we can go back through and alter that as and when we need to when we started to add in some of these darker colours. So now we're kind of building in a little bit of a flecked tone so he's got some white, some beaster and some sort of dark sepia flecked fur and he's got these also uh, these one or two dark patches through here. So we're actually going to add a base of the warm grey one because we need to build up the same sort of tone as what we've done in like this darker area here for the beaster tones that are going through the top. So I'm actually going to work on the top half first. So we're going to come to where his sort of eyelid comes over this bottom section we're going to add all of this in so what we need to do is just add a layer of the warm grey one over the entire thing working in the fur direction so you want to use this in exactly the same way as you did for adding in the base for the white fur here and that is just using a light pressure 
working in the direction of the fur. So just working back and forth over and you'll notice that when you start to add this in your whisker lines start to really pop out. So nice base over that entire thing. We're going to go straight into using some of the warm grey too to add in the darker sections. So we're going to just use a firmer pressure on our warm grey too to indicate where the darker areas are. We're still shading, still using that shading motion, just increasing the pressure slightly. This is also going to help to blend this darker area into the white fur directly next to it as well. There's also a little bit of a darker patch of fur just as we meet the lower section here. So I'm going to add that in there. And then there are one or two sort of flecked areas through this dark patch as well. So there's one or two ways that we can do that to add those in. We can go in and add all of the dark colour down and then try and pick out with a craft knife or something like that some of those uh, more sort of lighter toned there's just one or two flecked areas through here so we can pick that out with a craft knife or we can go in with embossing tool and add them in now um, or you can use a white gel pen or you can try and use an opaque white to go back over the top and because they're really nice and faint I'm just going to initially just try this technique of using the embossing tool because if it doesn't work it doesn't really matter we can go in and pick out the lines with a craft knife so don't be afraid to sort of combine several techniques I know we've got a layer of the warm grey one down here but it's going to help to give that this has actually got some stuff on it it's going to help to give colour to these little lines because it's going to be difficult to add colour to them otherwise so I'm just going to add one or two lines in with this and just blend it into where you've got a more concentrated area of them as well. Some of these little whiter lines just coming off the edge here as well, just add some of those in. Okay, so now what we can do is go over and add our layer of the warm grey too. Remember to work in the direction that the fur is going. Okay. So I'm just going to go around the darker area with the warm grey too into some of the lighter areas to help to blend that in a little bit more. And we're going to take some of the beaster because that's uh, like a little layer of beaster around this dark area. We're going to add that in around it and we're going to use some fur lines so we start to build in that fur texture. So just really gently building some of these fur lines in, going right down to where this meets the eye because it's going to help to build in that nice yellow tone for those kind of um, like fawn type colours that are going through his, his face there. Just coming around it. making sure that one or two are really pronounced and just increasing the pressure and you can see it kind of gets a darker concentration of colour down there so if you are wanting to increase the concentration of the colour quite quickly and you know exactly where the placement needs to be you can increase the pressure on your pencil 
to get a really nice quick lay down of that colour. I think we're good there. So we're going to take the Walnut Brown pencil and we're going to bl blend this with some dark indigo first before we go in with dark sepia. So I'm going to give my Walnut Brown a nice sharpen up so we've got a nice sharp point so we can get in some really fine lines and blend it into the surrounding areas here. So starting by just shading and filling in the main space. And then we can start to bring in some fur lines and you can see that really increases the tone of the darker colour. Get a really nice dark area in. And where we have some of these lighter tones overlapping this darker area, we want to work backwards into that. So we don't want to work in the direction of the fur because otherwise it's going to look like the dark fur is sitting on top of this lighter fur here. So we're working from sort of middle and working backwards into it because then that's going to help to break up that lighter edge it's going to look like the lighter fur is sitting on top of this darker fur so you want to bring this darker patch down a little bit as well I want to sort of mingle a few of these one up brown tones into that area where we've added that um, beaster as well So once we've got a little layer of that down, quite happy with it there, then we can add some of the dark indigo over the top. So we're going to take the dark indigo and work it over the walnut brown. take the walnut brown back over the top as well to help dilate some of that blue tone and then we'll work in some dark sepia so then get it really nice and dark And working backwards into the lighter fur so we get that nice overlap and also working over into the lighter area as well just lifting the pressure as we come into that bit So we're just going to work on adding some of the beaster and other tones to these lighter areas. So I'm actually going to work in some warm grey too and start working in fur lines working in the direction that the fur is going, blending it into this darker area slightly. And then once we've done this sort of fawn coloured area then we'll start to work on this dark area here as well. So I'm going to add in all of this fawn area around, so just working in some of the warm grey too, all the way around this top section, and then working in some Vista. So again working with fur lines, make sure your pencil's nice and sharp, working from this darker area and pulling it into this lighter area using some longer strokes 
and overlapping the fur line slightly as well. That's just going to help to give this nice sense of depth. I think it's got some really nice dense fur going on. I'm also going to bring the bee star along the top of the eye here. I'm working some of this colour here. Again, working in the opposite direction coming from the top of the eyelid there. Working around this darker area just by gently adding in some strokes of beaster. Just really working in some of these lines through here. It's really making sure we overlap some of the areas as well. So what we'll do is take some of the walnut brown and the dark sepia. I'm going to give both of these a quick sharpen up so we've got nice sharp points to work with, especially the dark sepia. I'm going to take the walnut brown and just start to darken in all of this darker area. I'm just going to lightly use the side of the walnut brown to come in and shade what we have the solid black area. And then when it starts to dissipate into the lighter fur, I'm just going to really gently add that in. Just get a little heavier through the middle section where it's really nice and dark and you should be able to see some of those embossed lines coming through. I'm just going to switch to working backwards into this lighter fur as well. So doing the same technique as what we did for the dark fur. So working backwards so we get a nice overlay and lengthening the length of the fur strokes here as well. I'm also coming down into the eyelid where it comes over the eye a little bit and just darkening, adding in some darker fur lines through there adding in all of that nice shadow and really using a bit of a harder pressure to come in to add the darker fur lines coming through this lighter section as well. So I'm making sure when we add the fur lines into the lighter section that we're keeping the fur lines quite far apart. If you group them close together you're going to end up with a really dark looking area which we're going to group the fur lines really close together in this bit here but in these lighter areas you don't want to group them really close together. So keep them quite spaced apart, quite sporadic, overlap them over one another as well. So you just end up with a nice kind of spacious area around these lighter lighter tones. And remember to work backwards into the fur when you're working into the lighter sections. really increasing the pressure in some areas as well just remember to keep gaps so we can accentuate some of these darker lines with some of the dark sepia in a second I'm also going to add in some blue like we've done on here just to keep that really nice and coordinated it's really increasing the pressure get that nice lay down of colour
coming into the top of the eye and just adding in a little bit more walnut brown for a little bit more shadow where that eyelid is overlapping as well now that we've got all of that fur in so coming over there the dark area just using the side of the dark indigo to put that darker tone down right through the center where it is the darkest we're going to use the walnut brown to come back over the top again just adding in some fur lines with the dark indigo using some dark sepia really bringing some of those lines back into the lighter area making sure we bring them forward as well to create a nice natural overlay and also just working some of this darker area over the top of this lighter bit just here and then really spacing out the darker lines through this lighter section. I'm going to add in some raw umber in a second as well for a little bit more of an orange vibe going on. So really keeping the space between the fur lines in the lighter section. And we're going to use the raw umber and we're going to add a glaze of this over the top of these lighter sections especially off to the left or the right here and then right in these bits around the dark area as well Maybe introducing a little bit of the Caput Mortem as well, a little bit more of a red tone through the right hand side, just adding in a few fur lines with that. It's above the eye as well. So you can use the white pencil to add in a few more of the whiter strands or use uh, something like a scalpel or a white gel pen to pick out some of these lighter lines as well. I'm just going to go in with my white pencil and just pick out and overlay a few of these little white sections it just helps to smooth it out a little bit as well Let's get rid of nice overlay there so we're going to work on this last little section here and then make any adjustments through here uh, with values and tone and all of that kind of stuff. For this last little piece we're just going to add in a layer of the warm grey one. So again working in the direction of the first, so for this last bit it's all sort of coming off towards this right hand side. going all the way up to where we've got the top layer coming over and then we've got right next to the eye here we've got this fawn coloured area which we're going to add in with some bista and a little bit of raw umber and then we've got a similar pattern going on as what we've got up here so 
I'm going to add in this bit here. I'm actually going to use some of the Dark Naples Ochre first down here to add a little bit more of a yellow tone first. Just using it lightly, using it on the side, shading back and forth and working in the direction of the fur. Slowly adding in a little bit of yellow and then we're going to work some of that B star over the top. Maybe even work in a little bit of the terracotta over there as well. Maybe some raw umber. But just shading back and forth with the beaster to add that down. You can see that tone going in now. It's a nice fawn tone. And making sure we kind of blend it round to the bottom of the eye as well so it doesn't just suddenly start this tone it kind of gradually fades in there. I'm just going to add in a few fur lines with the beaster through there as well just to help to blend this outer eye rim through. Maybe taking some walnut brown just blending a few walnut brown lines through there as well. Then we've got this lighter section which we're going to use the warm grey 2 to just bring some of this fawn tone. Just help to blend that. And we're also just going to fill in the darker section with some warm grey 2 lines as well. So just continuing to build up that fur texture. going to go over the fawn area with the warm grey too and just smooth it out a little bit. And then using some raw umber, going to shade a little bit of that down. Help really get those orange yellowy tones come out. It's also going to tie in really nicely with the eye as well. And then in this darker section we do have some lines of Beaster which I am going to just add in. Just some very faint lines coming down, especially coming right off the very edge, so right on the edge here on the right. Then it blends into this lighter patch, so I'm going to work backwards in the direction of the fur to help with that overlay. And just come off of the sort of fawn colour a little bit more towards the top. And then into the darker section, I'm just going to take some walnut brown. I'm going to give it a quick sharpening because it's got quite a blunt point there. So you want a nice sharp pencil. And then just working into the darker section. So just underneath the top patch of fur, I've got this really dark section. So I'm just going in with a heavy hand, just shading that in and then blending it out with some fur lines. Working backwards into the fur, remember to get that nice overlap and kind of keeping the fur lines fairly far apart and nice and light as we work into the lighter sections of the fur. So you can see kind of keeping this lighter band between the fawn area and the dark area. And we'll go through, actually I'm just going to go through now and just add in a few walnut brown lines to help blend everything together and then just darkening, increasing the pressure on the pencil down here, it's coming off towards the edge keeping the space between the fur lines quite far apart so we can add in some more of those sort of raw amber tones. I'm going to switch to using, uh, introducing a little tiny bit of the dark indigo to help darken up 
few key areas. I'm also going to blend the dark indigo into the white fur a little bit. It's just going to help to really whiten and brighten it. And then using the dark sepia, going to get a lot darker. Just really increase the pressure and work backwards. Just kind of control the fur lines a little bit more. really breaking up the edges and blending everything through getting really nice and dark underneath this bit here and also just shading a little bit of the dark sepia down so we get this nice shadow forming So I'm going to use some of the raw umber. I'm just going to use the side of the pencil and shade this over this small section on the right. Using some walnut brown just to again bring a few fur lines coming off of the outer eye section. Let's blend that in. And then just working on increasing the shadow around this top lid here. So just working a little bit more of the walnut brown and everything into the iris. It's increasing that shadow. I'm also going to bring the white pencil and use it to bring some little white strands over the top on this little section down here that we've just been working on. And what I'm also going to do is use the dark indigo to just shade in a few slightly darker bluer sections just using the side of the pencil and I'm going to also blend that with some of the Caput Mortem to create a little bit more of a purple tone. Now you can use something like a manganese violet or a blue violet or something like that if you want to add in some purple tones but I'm just mixing the two on top of one another and then through the bridge of the nose as well so just darkening a few of those darker patches within the white fur just brightening them as well by introducing some blues and of course we can always blend areas out and really lighten up those blue tones and really mush all of the Caput Mortem tones and the blue tones together to create a little bit more of a lighter violet tone by using the white pencil. I'm also just going to increase the shadow down the right hand side here but again using some of the Caput Mortem and then introducing a little bit of the dark indigo for a little bit of shadow there. I'm also just going to take some more dark sepia and really add in some of those darker fur lines. It's really picking out a few of them here. And through the top and this, this section here, just using some of the white pencil to pick out some slightly lighter whiter details and we can always go over I'm going to use some of the terracotta for a little bit more orange to go over the top of some of those white tones that we just added in it's underneath the eye as well so really just saturating some of those colours through there So as for the actual iris itself, now that we've got all of the fur in around the outside we can just go in and hype up some of these colours a little bit more. So just increasing the pressure on the tip of the pencil, just working in a few more oranges around the outside, really making it nice and vibrant. It's helping to blend everything together, we can always go back in and really darken up that pupil as well. 
if you want to use a black pencil or something like that to really go in and add some much darker tones and feel free to do that as well but I'm just going to go in with a little bit more dark sepia I'm going to add a little bit more of an orange tone so the going in with the terracotta afterwards really helps to make it look a lot more vibrant starts to add a little bit more of that shine on the on the eye as well just coming around the pupil just helps to blend everything together as well and I think we're pretty much done maybe just introducing a few more green tones so just really kind of hyping up the saturation of some of these tones and colours that we've got going on through here just giving it everything a really nice contrast making sure we've got all of our values in correctly and I think we're ready to call that done so yeah that's our whisper eye I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it useful in learning new techniques if you are just starting out this is absolutely perfect because you're you'll be understanding uh, how to use several different techniques so we've got a different technique of smoothing within the actual iris and then a completely different technique coming through into the fur and everything so you've got a few cool techniques underneath your belt if you're just starting out and if you're just here for some practice then i hope you've had some fun with this one it's um i always love to do the eye studies so yeah i'm going to stop there and peel off of my edges and i'll see you guys in another tutorial bye I saw you from across the room When our eyes met I never knew That I could feel this way And it's kinda strange